Hi, my name is Richard Pennycook and welcome to Export Kit. In this example I'll be demonstrating a PSD to WordPress export using the suite version 126. So off the bat you'll see that we make use of a lot of pages. In WordPress it's a very structured output so you actually need a few default pages to render your theme. These are the header, the index and the footer. These are the three main pages that you require. Uh, WordPress though recommends that you also add a single a page, an archive, a search, etc. And we also have a custom services page that we've added here. So we're going to go through each of these uh, just to actually show you how Export Kit handles WordPress. So if we look at the header, uh, one of the first things be it that with each folder, what we want to do is basically have as many folders as possible. WordPress is a very, very structured output. So the more folders you have, the more structured your code output will be. Now now, one of the new tags that we have in 126 is our code tag. What this will allow us to do, and if you look at the layer here, is actually add inline PHP to any text layer. This will render the content using the styles that you basically denoted in Photoshop. So you see here that we have blog info name. You can add whatever code that you'd like. It'll just render the same way that WordPress would. Um, one of the next things that we want to take a look at is our actual background. Uh, actually, no, sorry, the logo. We have a new tag called our WP option. What this will do is render an option in our WordPress admin to actually change this item and this is responsive be it for the text or the image or the actual shape layer so it will change depending on the actual layer that you've used and allow you to modify those options so if we take a look at the tag what you'll see is that we have a logo this will be the name of the option that we're editing and we also have a home logo this is our ID of the option in WordPress WordPress requires unique IDs uh, whenever you're actually modifying any type of attribute that you set so you'll see here that we also have a menu now our menu is constructed where we have two folders. One is our margin. Um, this is not actually rendered in the output. What this will do is actually just maintain a space and a size for the menu itself. But within our nav menu, this is one of our new features as well too. You can denote whether you want a horizontal or a vertical menu. Along with the title, and you'll see that we have header menu, what this will do is that in the actual output, you can assign an individual menu to that item. And you'll see that what we have here is we have a few skins for our menu. We have a background and, and text layer for our skins. What this will do is generate each menu item using these skins that we've denoted here. Now, if you're familiar with the WordPress themes, you'll see that the text that's contained within the label is the same characters that you would use in WordPress to basically allow it to generate the title. So we don't do anything differently than you, what you would do in WordPress naturally. Now, if we go ahead and we take a look at the footer, uh, so let's just scroll down. The footer itself, you'll see that we've added a couple more options and we've also added options to these tags. So you can basically build the header and the footer how you'd like and it'll render it correctly. So if we go and we look at the index, and let's just hide a couple pages uh, just so we can see it better. The index makes use of the WordPress loop and a lot of pages will. There are two types of ways that you can do the loop. You can either denote an entry, which will do a default uh, WordPress loop, or you can denote a post where what you're doing is you're designating where the information will be displayed. So let's take a look at those uh, in a little bit more detail. You'll see here with the index, um, we've added a couple more options that you can change in your WordPress admin. And again, these you'll actually see once we go to the admin. But if we take a look at the loop and you'll see that we have posts here, because we're using posts, what we're doing is we're, we're telling it basically that we're going to designate where the information is being displayed. You can see some of this here, so let's take a look. We have PHP the title, we have PHP the excerpt. We've also added a link here, and you can actually see it if we can kind of go over to the permalink. I don't know if you can see that there correctly. What this will do is actually give a link to that post, and we also have an image tag here uh, for the thumbnail of that post. You'll see a couple of shapes. Uh, this is actually fixes. Now, WordPress makes great use of fixes to, sorry, to designate where content will break. That way, you can actually denote spaces between content uh, while they're rendering. Now, the loop itself, it's comprised of either post or entry you have to have a loop folder within that loop you can have basically whatever you'd like but for the individual post item we recommend that you use posts if you're using posts and use entry if you're using entries now we also have new conditional folders where for instance we have whether the post has a thumbnail and we also have if the post doesn't have a thumbnail and you'll see how these render in the output now all pages will use this similar context and logic when building so let's go ahead and let's take a look at for instance the single now, you'll see for the single, um, what we have is the title at the top, so this will basically, and we're using the code tag, this will replace with the WordPress title. We also have some variables to designate the date that the post was done, uh, some of the categories and the tags. Now, you can also use uh, the next and the previous link, 
and these are done a little bit differently where you can just basically add the tag for it directly and let's look at the next now again the thumbnail is basically if the post has a thumbnail so you have to put the conditional folder whether or not you want it to display otherwise it'll just permanently display you'll see for the content though we have a fix and we're using entries now because what we're going to do is we're going to use the default WordPress output. Now we've drawn the content. Uh, there's various ways that you can include it. You can either use an empty layer or if you use a shape, it'll basically take the position and the size for uh, when it renders the content. We also have a sidebar that we've added. Now if you basically uh, remember what we did for our posts, we have our entries. And again, we're going to use a single entry. Um, when we're actually designating the actual post itself. We also have our loop and within our loop we have our content. So we have our comments area and this is virtual so uh, you don't really need to add content. You can just basically add the actual layer tags. And we also have our author content and again we can add our inline PHP to designate where that information will be stored. Now again we have to make use of fixes so for instance it will break here uh, once the loop uh, finishes so that way the author is basically maintained at the bottom of the actual page. Now if we take a look at the archives, uh, it's going to be under the same principles. Oh sorry, let's take a look at the page. So you'll see the page here, uh, we're not actually drawing the content, so what this will do is draw the content with a full width, basically. Uh, so let's just take a look at it really quick. So the entry and the content, so this will just span to whatever width we've designated the content. And let's take a look at archives. So archives, you'll see the what we've done is we've drawn the result using the same logic again we have our search view similar to our archive with our sidebar we have our 404 page this is an option so you can change this in the output along with this text as well and we also have our custom services page where we have our options here that we can actually change in our WordPress admin now the next thing that we're gonna look at is WordPress requires many theme styles uh, to actually output correctly so this I'm, I'm I kid you not you will have to actually denote these or it will not render the way that you expect now if you've watched any of our previous uh, tutorials you'll see that we do allow for any type of custom style that you want to designate so with our, th our style tags what you can do is you can actually take over the WordPress themes um, and you'll see a few of them here so what we have is that we have our site our DT our D our anchor our anchor hover a uh, couple table values our caption text we have uh, the hover for the caption text our comments and we also have a few for our nav items these are some of the basic required ones but you can add as many themes as you'd like um, style sorry uh, to basically personalize your theme you can personalize your theme in any way so this will allow you to give a great output so let's go ahead and let's take a look at how this will actually render now the great thing about export kit is typically what you can just do is just close and reopen now one thing we do want to note if we had exported it the way that we just had it because all the folders were open this would take about 20 to 25 minutes to export so what I do recommend is that you take a couple seconds well, it will be about 20 or 30 seconds and you close each individual folder this will actually speed up your export by about 75 percent the export now will only take uh, relatively about 10 minutes to complete so let's go ahead and let's begin Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to basically speed this up and just show you what it outputs in the end.